ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಸೊ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ವಿ ಆಲ್ ನೋ ದಟ್ ದ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ವಾಸ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ದನ್ ಎ ಇಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟೇಷನ್ If you look at the policies, in the morning session, the speakers were talking about when we started these policies and how it took a shape. So whatever we have as education is primarily the British education, which was in oak for a very long period of time and even today, we are, whatever structure of education we have, is the british education so it started with macaulay who introduced english education and the structures of course the structures were very good initially because we were in a totally different system of gurukulas and when this kind of a structure was implemented we accepted it and we said that it is going to give a particular direction for the nation so based on this the first few policies whether the policy of 1968 or the changes which which were done in 1986 all these policies were incremental to what had already been formed by the britishers whether we call the college system or the university system everything was brought out by the british system but what happened over a period of time all these structures brought so much rigidity in the system and today if you talk about the kind of people that we are developing it is more about they cannot think creatively but they can only do specific jobs and the employability reports which were uh, released by nascom or any other organization says that our people are not employable so why did this happen right and in a number of occasions when we had discussions about education we all presented only about problems and problems that each the faculty blaming the management management blames the faculty faculty blames the students and the entire stakeholders were blaming each other that what we expected of education is really not happening so as an answer to all these the national education policy of 2020 it did not leave even one stone unturned it understood the problem of each and every stakeholder whether it is the management whether it is the policy maker whether it is the university structures whether colleges whether teachers or students and you know that it conducted 155 stakeholder consultations before drafting this policy so what were these consultations about so it got all the inputs as to where we are heading to and what are the problems of this education and how to make it more meaningful and more useful for the citizens of this country the policy is draws from the past it takes into account the future of this nation and also works on what is the present structures which are already there in our country so taking into account the past future and the present the national education policy has been framed so this is an answer to all the problems that we have been facing in this country with respect to education all the rigidities have been loosened up when morning people were talking about coming out of these silos like we had compartmentalization 
arts, science and uh, commerce or whatever it is, there was lot of compartmentalization that had happened and now it is a free flow of knowledge that can happen amongst the disciplines. So, the national education policy is highly, the only one of the important aspects of this policy is that it is learner centric. If you look at what was the kind of education when I asked the students who is important in a teacher student relationship everybody mentioned that it was the teacher because the teacher gives knowledge to the students but we forgot that it is the student who has to learn. We were highly examination oriented, high stake examinations were being held and then like how companies work from quarter to quarter for profits, institutions work from semester to semester, students work only for their examinations and nothing else. Right? So it was only about examinations. So examination has become the biggest nightmare of the children of our country. So we are, with this national education policy, it is only about a change in the mindset. It is not about what the government is going to implement for all of us. It is about what can happen at the grassroots. You and me as faculty, what change we can bring in at the grassroots become very, very critical element of the national education policy. So it is not that we have to wait for some government order to be implemented. It is about how we change our mindset how we understand multidisciplinary education, how we understand interdisciplinary education and start implementing in our classrooms. Because what happens is that as faculty, we are also the products of the same education system. We have also brought under the same rigidities, right? We, were also product, we have also undergone the same thing, the frontal method of teaching. We have experienced the same and then we will also impart the same thing to our students, right? We think that the faculty has to prepare so much of information and then it has to be given to the students where the students cannot think at all. So, this has been that frontal method of teaching is what we have been bounded in that structure. First thing is, as faculty, we will have to loosen up what structures we have put in our minds right about education that if we remove at least we can put one step towards the implementation of the national education policy right so when i talk about a subject always what we do is we have prescribed textbooks we look at the textbooks and start teaching right and all the faculty are busy in completion of the syllabus because we want to prepare the students for the examination but that's not the scenario. We have to do reverse engineering now. What is the reverse engineering? Content is not, even if you don't teach the entire textbook, it is okay. But what you are teaching, see whether the student has learned that. Whether he or she is capable of applying the same in real time situation in his life, in his family, for the nation. So these are the questions that we have to answer. So first thing I would like to tell you is we have to keep ourselves open to this national education policy. Only then it is possible for us to implement the national education policy. So my topic is on interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary education. One of the breakthroughs that has happened from the national education policy is introduction of the multidisciplinary education. Breaking of these kind of silos in our thought process. So that has been broken. So what is this breaking? For example, if you have a problem of waste management, right? So do you think that a student, an accounting student would be able to solve a problem of waste management? It may not be because we have been training our students to learn only accounts and nothing else. We have made them 
if you are business students you think only about business and you do not know whether the management can be applied in other situations or not so we were confining everything to our own disciplines and now we have to broaden our horizons that is what is about multidisciplinary education can you change the slide somebody okay just i have taken few sentences that you can see from the national education policy document itself in the first few pages of the national education policy document it says that education is about opening the doors and windows of the mind so this is what i have been telling we have to first open the doors and windows of the mind if it has to be implemented so we have to come out of those rigidities and start looking outside what in reality is what is our country where are the problems that are existing and how are we going to solve that rather than thinking about being only bookish and trying to get only the disciplinary knowledge aspect so we need to open our doors and windows of the mind and in one instance it also says that to gain perspective to think critically to express creatively and to find meaning in a, meaning in a holistic way so this multidisciplinary education is about we also need to think critically at the same time we should be adding the creativity like mind is a constant endeavor it keeps on working and you have to creatively express you should be able to creatively express the same so and find meaning in a holistic way so we are talking about whether music and computers can be club together right so can you understand music through any other discipline so physics and music sir was talking today morning sharma whether you can bring any other arts discipline with the of the science discipline so it's not just about jobs or careers it about it is about educating people for life so all these three statements i have taken from the first few uh, pages of the national education policy you can understand if you get deeper into these sentences you will understand what national education policy is looking at so it is not about jobs and careers all the institutions work only making the students write the examinations and take the placements so we boast ourselves for placing so many students but it is not about that whether it is possible for an individual to use the knowledge that he has got in any situation in his life so it is for educating for a lifetime and it is not educating for the examination next so i am try i'm trying to uh auto switch on the want to so look at the terms interdisciplinary multidisciplinary and others we have been coming up across these things and uh, national education policy talks about primarily interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary education but there are several terminologies that we use very frequently one is interdisciplinary that is working within a single discipline so the whatever we are going to take up as per the national education policy we also have some majors so many of them ask this question whether when we go for multidisciplinary doesn't it become like jack of all trades and master of none right we all feel that when we say multidisciplinary what will the students do they do not have one area of specialization no we also have some specific majors where they will deep dive into it so that is interdisciplinary working within a single discipline secondly we have we are talking about cross disciplinary viewing one discipline from the perspective of other so music if you can look at it 
from the perspective of physics right so if you look at water from the perspective of philosophy water like for example in uh, uh, mantra pushpa i don't know how many of you have heard about this it is all about water it come talks about the relationship of water with various elements water is considered to be the basic element and it talks about the relationship between the cosmos and the water so water is seen in air like air has humidity so if you look at that you are looking viewing one discipline from the perspective of other so you are looking water from the perspective of chemistry water from the perspective of physics you are looking water from the perspective of cosmology so if you are viewing this then it could be called as cross disciplinary multidisciplinary is from different disciplines having different disciplines simultaneously is called multidisciplinary and using different disciplines together to solve the real time problems is called as multidisciplinary so we require multidisciplinary approach in whatever we have been doing all the problems if you look at the problems of the world like for example vaccination management right so what were the disciplines that came into uh, uh, that were used for vaccines and vaccine management you can look at this so if you look at covid it had a multi stakeholder approach and a multi disciplinary approach so health sector had to work for it the non governmental organizations had to work for it even the religious organizations work for it right so it is a multi disciplinary approach that requires in solving real time problems interdisciplinary is integrating knowledge and methods from dis different disciplines and using a real synthesis of approaches right so you bring in different disciplines together and try and understand for example science and spirituality right so in meditation there is a component of science right it is about breathing for example the first step for meditation probably but must be breathing so integrating knowledge and methods from different disciplines and using a real synthesis of approaches and transdisciplinary transdisciplinary creating a unity of intellectual frameworks beyond the disciplinary perspectives so thinking beyond the disciplines and trying to talk about a particular concept is called as transdisciplinary i have just explained in the next picture you can see that just change the slide about disciplinary jargons intradisciplinary deeper 
with one discipline, multidisciplinary. So we are now, you know that I don't know if you have adopted the Bangalore University uh, syllabus as per national education policy is multidisciplinary. So I saw just morning the BA syllabus where you have about temple architecture and also we are talking about history, we are talking about politics. At the same time, you have some environmental science in that. So it is multidisciplinary in nature. So this is cross-disciplinary. So all the disciplines come together. Okay, so you try and find meaning. Interdisciplinary is overlapping of one discipline with the other and that is going beyond the disciplines and trying to get a coherent meaning is transdisciplinary. Next please. Okay, just to look at the uh, historical perspective of this multidisciplinary education and today we are all talking about whatever we have adopted in the national education policy is from the West. Right? Because there are a number of liberal arts schools in the West and we say that the same liberal arts concept has been brought to our country. It is not so. If you look at the, the first thing which I talk about is see the uh, image of Goddess Saraswati. You can see Veena in one hand which represents music. On the other hand, she has held a book which talks about discipline. At the same time, she is sitting in a dance posture which reflects dance. And in one hand, she holds the Japamala which talks about the spirituality. So, at the same time, at the same time, Saraswati is a representation of multidisciplinary approach. This is what was already there in our country right from the beginning that an individual is a holistic person and he or she cannot be working in silos. So you need everything to make a complete whole of an individual. Right? So you need the science, you need spirituality, you need arts, you need arts and you need various kinds of disciplines simultaneously to become a holistic individual. So look at where we had holistic education, multidisciplinary education, we have already studied about various universities which already existed. So though they were not called as universities, they were the cent highest centers of learning in the country. And post Buddhism period, there were a large number of monasteries which provided the kind of education that was needed. Take the examples of Gurukula wherein in the Gurukula system, even the Upanishads, if you take the different Upanishads, they bring everything. You look at the Vedas. Sama Veda is more about the music, even the kind, the way you sing Sama Veda, um, narrate Sama Veda or recite Sama Veda is in the form of music. So, Takshashila, which is in current Pakistan, uh, Nalanda, Vikramashila, and Odantapuri in Bihar. All these were in Bihar, is, are in Bihar, Nalanda, Vikramashila, and Odantapuri. Vallabhi in Gujarat, Sharada Peet in Kashmir. So, all these were centers of excellence where there was an open environment for learning. So, in these centers for learning, teachers and students, they resided there and they learned whatever is an area of their interest and nothing was imposed on them but it depended on the interest of the student. Whoever is the learner, based on the interest of the learner, they went to these schools and they started learning. There is an example that Chanakya took Chandragupta Maurya to Takshashila and trained him in multiple, in multiple disciplines for 8 years. You all know about it. The history talks about how Maurya, how he was, 
he became the king of Magadha, it was because of Chanakya's efforts that there was a transformation in Chandragupta Maurya and this happened at Takshashila. So, multidisciplinary education in India is not new, but because of the British structures, we had made everything come into some silos and now we have realized that is not helping us. That will not provide the required skills to um, work uh, in our workplaces and it is not actual learning that is going to happen. So come to the next. So one more uh, example from the West which I wanted to take. I don't know if you have read the book College Pathways for Possibilities by Saikat Majumda. So he talks about Howard Gardner's multiple intelligence theory. All these years we were talking about the intelligent quotient, right? That is only about, IQ is only about logical thinking, but intelligence, how is our mind? Mind is the shape of the pot is not determined. You can take anything and everything. So if you are trained in music, you can become a musician. If you are trained in dance, you can become a dancer. If you are trained in something else, uh, that is uh, writing uh, uh, skills, you can become a writer. So Homer Gardner says that every individual's mind comprises of multiple intelligences and it is not only about logical thinking. So he talks about being a naturalist, being bodily and kinesthetic, like for dancers you need the kinesthetics, movement, the motors, the motor movements, musical, spatial, linguistic, intrapersonal, interpersonal, logical and mathematical. So if an individual is capable of these, he is made up of multiple components in the brain, it is possible for him to accept any of the disciplines. It is only about the mindset. See for example we say that no I am not a musician. I can't sing. If I sing you know you will all walk away from this room. So we make some statements and we always think that oh somebody is very intelligent. He is, he gets 90% throughout. It is not like that. We are talking about a fixed mindset. It is, if you just open up, the brain creates its own pathways, its own pathways to learn newer things and that today we are calling it as the growth mindset. Growth mindset allows us to think and add and learn any new skill. So how many of us can think that today we can start learning an instrument. We all say, no, I am not made for that. I am not made for dance. I am not made for writing. I am not made for something else. I cannot become a sportsman. So it is all our mindset. But new, uh, the neuroplasticity talks about, the new concept of neuroplasticity talks about the brain can create new pathways to learn newer things. So, Howard Gardner's multiple intelligence theory which says that people have multiple intelligences, not one intelligence alone. The brain is the seat of a large number of capabilities and only when, if we use the capability, if we try to do it, it is possible for us to do it. So, when we say in multidisciplinary education, no, no, only science students should study only science, they cannot study arts. Right? It is, that's wrong actually. So their children will have the capability to use multi-disciplines and hence this multidisciplinary approach is fully justified as to like you need to have a holistic view and not an isolated and a piecemeal view of things. Next. So coming to the national education policy, uh, what national education policy is talking about previous? So conscious breaking down of boundaries between disciplines, <coughs> otherwise we won't do it. You know we all had uh, CPCS right? 
choice based credit system even before national education policy implementation we had choice based credit system did we follow that we were in the rigid way of thinking if you say cbc yes we will give you only one additional option of studying one additional paper even today institutions find it very difficult to give a real multidisciplinary education to the students even whatever we have done in the state of karnataka in terms of bangalore university or any other university that has implemented multidisciplinary <coughs> education it is not there is no 100% choice for the students so for example if i say that i want to learn bharatanatyam along with my commerce uh, subjects is the institution or capable of providing bharatanatyam as one of the courses that the student will learn so we have limitations institutionally we have limitations that's the reason national education policy is talking about large multidisciplinary universities where everything is available at one place but this is a very difficult thing because we have already established smaller colleges with focus on specific areas of education but now if we have to become multidisciplinary then we will have to expand our horizons expand our offerings what we offer to the students as courses have to we have to expand it so it talks about enhancing breadth as well as depth so that's why i told you multidisciplinary education is not about jack of all trades and master of none but it is it talks about enhancing both the breadth breadth is multiple courses depth is you have focus on a specific course for example i can become a physicist but at the same same time i know something about sports i know something about theater i know something about music so that at different points in my life you know i can use any of the skills that is required for my life so enhancing breadth and depth exposure to new and diverse disciplines concepts thoughts and perspective 50% of 50% of knowledge people 50% of knowledge people learn in college has become obsolete so what we learn so if we look at the concepts that we have learned it has become obsolete now but what we are teaching today many things which are age old textbooks we are teaching even today many things have become obsolete so we need to look at new and diverse disciplines explore and discovering interests linking specialized areas of study to other variables that is shift from data era to knowledge era and uh, multi skilling to shift careers that is ten the technology enhancing occupation mobility so we have a different different thought process totally in terms of technology you can see the changes in terms of in everything you have ai right ai has is almost ruling the technology world so for every solution if you go to startups every solution is to ai only everybody works on ai but we are are we capable of offering such new courses so we are all these years we are talking about data 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 but national education talks about shift from the data era to knowledge era so we need to become a knowledge era and not only about data era so we were talking about data driven decisions all these days now we we'll have to talk about decisions driving the data it's the reverse they we were talking about data era all these days so decisions have to drive data next one so coming to nep and multidisciplinary education what multidisciplinary education does i want to tell you one is choice right if you offer more number of courses students have a better choice to opt from various courses so there are two types of choices that the students will have disciplinary choices as well as various elective choices have to be provided choice has to be given 
So even then, earlier when we worked on uh, the mission document for the government of Karnataka, we were talking about choice. See, ultimately, learner is important. So it is highly, that's why I put learner in the center. So it is learner-centric education, what learner wants. It is not what teacher wants. It is not about what I want for my children. As a parent, it is not about what as a parent I want for my children. But what my children wants is very, very important. So learner-centric and providing good choice. So you, you know that uh, the, uh, some of the arts, you know, for example, Yakshagana. So there are hardly few teachers who teach Yakshagana. And is it possible for, uh, for example, as a student, I am learning something in the college and I go to evening, I go to some art classes. So when, if you provide art classes in the college itself, is it not blending or providing uh, or taking into consideration the interest of the student to grow holistically? So that is what we need to do. So choice has to be provided, giving a large op uh, wide option to the students to pick from the basket of courses that is being offered by the institutions. It is broad based in terms that there is no, you, can you click some more, uh, few more uh, points are there. There is no division between curricular, extracurricular and co-curricular, right? National education policy talks about breaking the boundaries. No curricular, extracurricular, co-curricular. If it is extracurricular, only five students participated, right? Extracurricular. 95% of the students don't participate in extracurricular. How many of them come for the sports day? How many of them attended the um, trial hoisting yesterday? Right? So you know the number of students who come to these programs is very limited. So that's why national education policy does not give a division between curricular, extracurricular and co-curricular. Everything comes under the curriculum. Everything is credited. Everything has a credit. The credits will have to be earned by the students. So focus, I told you about studying majors and specialization in honors. Don't think that it is. It's only about learning too many things and knowing nothing. It's not like that. So there are some major courses where the student will deep dive and understand more. And then skills. There are two types of skills that the national education policy talks about. One is the disciplinary skills and the other is the transferable skills. So skilling is one main element in the national education policy. What are disciplinary skills? So for example, for a journalist, Report writing is a very important skill, right? But transferable skill is if you know computers and if you can type in the word, right? As a journalist, you are a writer, but at the same time, you need some computer knowledge to type, use Nudi or whatever Varava and type it, then it is a transferable skill. So you need both disciplinary skills as well as transferable skills. So transferable skills are skills which cuts across all the disciplines. Disciplinary skills are specific to those disciplines. Okay, and then uh, innovative pedagogy, uh, experiential and discovery driven. Today the mantra is about experiential. What is experiential? We all know what is experiential. Morning we were talking about flip class classrooms. There is no need for teachers at all. What do we need? We need only facilitators. We need to be are the ones who will enable the students learn. Allow them to sit in the library and ask them to collect information about one particular topic from various sources and he or she will make a presentation. So the learning is much more effective rather than when we tell them we give one lecture of one hour it is a waste when if they do it by themselves. So we know that Madi Nodu, right? If you listen, it doesn't stay for long. 
If they do it, it stays for a longer period of time. So it is all experiential and discovery driven. They have to discover themselves. It is not about just pushing in the classes. So what I appeal to all the faculty who have att uh, attended this program today is that from the very next class onwards, please work on your pedagogies. Change the style of teaching. Just make every student participate. Attendance is not at all important. Attendance is not important. Just don't, even if you don't take attendance, see that how many students come and learn. Okay, this is the experiment that we'll have to do. So if we are going to the old structures, we are pushing everything on the students. If you come with the NEP, then you are making, it is only about bottom up. It is not about top down. Okay, so that's the change that we need to bring. That is innovative pedagogy. And then don't wait for any government circular to tell you that you'll have to be innovative in the class. Right? So we need, to, need not wait for anyone. We have to be, as faculty, we need to be more innovative. Deep knowledge, that is research and projects based learning. So undergraduate level, have you ever heard that research becomes a part of undergraduate courses? When we talked about research, it was only after the post-graduation, right? Even post-graduates never try to do research at the post-graduation level. So after post-graduation, we were talking about research, but research becomes a basic element right from the beginning because that inquisitiveness, that search for truth, that quest for truth comes only through research. So that kind of a system has to be built. So that is research and project-based learning. So your evaluation patterns have to change. Your assessments will have to change. How do you assess the students? It is not about assessing uh, through the examination only, but it is assessment through various other methods. And then career, uh, the, uh, this uh, multidisciplinary education takes care of the career, skill-based jobs and change in careers. So have, do you know how many of these software engineers who get into these IT companies have changed their careers? So a study talks about that in India, 22% of the software engineers at the age group of 35 to 40 are changing their careers, midway change in the careers. Why are they doing this? You are, go and ask any programmer who is working in an IT company, he'll be fed up with doing programming for his lifetime because he always sits in front of the computer and he loses sight of what is happening around the world. So I know an organization called Youth for Seva in which most of them who have joined as full-time volunteers are all software engineers. Why did they get into that is because at some point on, in time or the other, people would like change in their careers. They don't want to stick. Gone are the days where we worked only for one organization for our lifetime. So it is about doing something and once you start understanding the world better, you think that I need to work very differently. So I am sure that to many of the faculty these ideas would have come. So multidisciplinary education will enable not only for immediate jobs, taking skill based jobs because we are giving the skills, but it also enables change in their careers. Because for example, Raghu Dikshit, you all know Raghu Dikshit, right? So he's basically a microbiologist. He's an MSc in microbiology and today he is one of the top singers. So he has changed his discipline. So if he had not trained in music in his early days, okay, today he would not have become a musician. He would have worked in the laboratory as a microbiologist. Okay. So how did the change in career happen? So only when we are exposed to multi-disciplines, whatever is passion, our passion is, 
so sir was talking about it is more about the passion of an individual so this passion will remain for the lifetime so many of them are moving out from their regular careers that is possible only if you look at education in a multidisciplinary perspective and if you look at only from one sided and becoming something you know then it may not help so another important element of the multidisciplinary education as per the nep is multiple exit and entry system where in the credit structure is created and today morning we were talking about abc academic bank of credits where you can store all your credits and you can make use of it at a later date so multiple entry and exit system will make this multidisciplinary education more feasible in the institutions so after your first year you would recognize that i am interested in a particular discipline naturally you can go to the institution where it is possible and especially rural children you know so they had lot of problems that they came out of their education at a very very early age, age. the dropouts were very high the dropouts <laughs> why ger we are not able to make it 50% is because they enter the portals of higher education at the end of one year or two year they will drop out from education higher education will not be completed and this multiple exit and entry structure is helping multi this kind of an education system so this is the entire essence of multidisciplinarity and how it has to be implemented in every institution
4 plus 1 also research becomes an integral part of the 4th year in the honors course. If it is 3 plus 2 also, the research becomes an integral part of the 2 year PG program. So, a PhD shall require either a master's degree or a 4 year bachelor's degree with the research. So, PhD requires 3 plus 2, 5 years or 4 plus 1, 5 years to get into a PhD program and MPhil has been totally uh, removed from the structure. There is no MPhil program. And institutions are also allowed to take up a 4 year UG PG program integrated 5 year bachelor's and master's program. Okay, so this is the structure as per the national education policy. Lot of things are there. One is flexibility is one of the main elements which we are talking. Choice is another biggest element for the students. Broad based and large based institutions. So if we are working on like once again we are into silos like commerce, arts. First thing is at your level, at the faculty level, you start, have to start thinking in a multidisciplinary angle. That is, take up interdisciplinary studies. Right? So, your research should be more of interdisciplinary in nature rather than looking at one type of a discipline. Next. Okay. So, what, what is the benefit of multidisciplinary education? Passion driving the motivation. You all know that those who are, have taken up a passion driven course, sports persons for example, how is their focus in the academics? Is it good or bad? Much higher, right? So if they have, if they have got into sports, their focus in the education also will be very good because passion always drives motivation. So you have two things, the brain and the heart. The heart can give you always greater inspiration. The brain always tells you that you do this and you do that. But the thing is, the motivation comes from within for artists or those who are pursuing passion based courses. And then high adaptability, if you go for both breadth and length, that is multidisciplinary courses, there will be high adaptability of individuals. So those who have a broader perspective, okay, so you can take an example uh, in many uh, movies they have shown that a student uh, who, had, who was a first rank student, where he ended and the person who had a multiple perspective and who was into so many things and what he could achieve so it is because of high adaptability. So those who have scored lesser marks in their examinations have done better in their life is because of their high adaptability nature. And then breadth of knowledge, creativity, synthesizing ideas and linking concepts is possible only when you have a multidisciplinary approach. Next. Okay, so how are these multidisciplinary courses introduced? So I was in the curriculum development for uh, uh, the task force actually. We came out with different kinds of courses that we need to introduce under the heads. Okay, one is ability enhance, enhancing courses. Those which enhances the abilities. Some foundational courses, skill enhancing courses, perspective building courses. It builds only your perspective about the nation. For example, you are talking about the history of this nation. Then it is, if you are introducing it as one of the courses, it's a perspective building course. For a common student, if you have introduced history, it gives a different perspective. Correct? And then you have disciplinary courses and creative expressions. Next. So how uh, skills have to be integrated in multidisciplinary education for all the faculty who are today attending this, how are you going to bring in skills? It has to be explicit. If you ask 
teachers, you know, they'll say, no, no, I'm giving all the skills, whatever the skills are required, and providing those kinds of skills to the students. It is not like that. You have to be very, very spe specific, and it has to be explicitly integrated. If you have a 60-40 rule, 40% 40 of the discipline and 60% is skill. It has to be explicit. And secondly, it has to be highly visible. Every class, you know, you have to make it. For example, if you are delivering a course of 30 hours, 30 hours course, you have to specifically mention how many are skill-based classes and how many are only knowledge-based classes. So it has to be highly visible and it always has to be taught in the context. Skills cannot be out of context. Okay? It should be within the context and you have to have an explicit assessment for skills. Are we capable of assessing the skills? That is the question. Are we capable of assessing the skills? So please ask yourself, would we be able to assess the skills of the students? So what are the changes in the assessment patterns that we have to bring about? See, a curriculum change has to be accompanied by pedagogical change. A pedagogical and curriculum change has to be accompanied by assessment changes also. If you do only one, if you introduce only multidisciplinary education, it's of no use. You have to change the pedagogy. Style of teaching has to change. And next, you have to change the way you assess. Next slide. So, how to start a multidisciplinary culture? Okay. So, how to start a multidisciplinary culture in our own institutions? So, we need to restructure our curriculum in universities to integrate multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary courses, universities. Introduce major and minor courses to focus both on discipline-based courses and multidisciplinary courses. Major course could be disciplinary courses and minor interdisciplinary. Introducing open electives and offering choice to the students. So, this cannot happen overnight, right? So, first think about you should have your own national education policy implementation task force within your own institution. Has it been attempted here in anybody in any of the institutions? NEP implementation, have you started? Anyone? So, we need to have in our own institution a task force and start looking at the curriculum, what we are offering to the students. How can we broad based it? In the first year, what are the additional courses that we can introduce? And how we can change the style of teaching? And what is the assessment that we will have to do? So, these three major changes have to be brought about if you want to introduce multidisciplinary education. So, what I appeal to all those faculty who have come from different colleges or only Shishadipuram College, you will have to start one task force within your own institution where you will work very closely on that. It is not so easy as said. Because each one, we talk about institution development plan. Multidisciplinary education should be a component of the institution development plan and what are the milestones that we need to achieve at the end of one year, how much multidisciplinarity we can bring, in the end of two years what is that we can do. So we need to work very closely on that. Otherwise it is not possible. It will be only a lecture. Today I am telling you and tomorrow you may not implement. If it has to be done by us. It is not somebody comes and does it. It has to be a culture within the institution. So how are we going to give more options to the students? And what are the new pedagogies that we are using in the classes? Do we do all the classes like one person lecturing and the other sitting in the class? No. Go out. Sit in the corridors. Sit in the quadrangle or sit in different formats, okay? Sit in a circular format and start teaching. Sit in the library with the students and start teaching. So we need to explore different kinds of pedagogies. That is very, very critical for multidisciplinary education. So pedagogical change has to be done 
and the third change is the assessment. What when we do the question question paper for the examination? Because I have worked with so many board of examiners and it is very, very difficult to change the mindset of the faculty. You can't even give one practical question in the examination because they will come back and once again say that no, no, the student will not be able to answer. Define something, right? Even Bloom's taxonomy, whatever we are talking about, it only you will have to it is not about understanding and comprehension. It is more about analyzing, evaluating and creating. Is the student able to create something? Then only he can think differently. Out of the box, how is it possible? So, if these things can be implemented in the classes, only then the real national education policy is fully implemented. Otherwise, it is old wine in the new bottle. Okay? So we are not doing it. So what I suggest is that, so we will have to have targets for our institution, five year plan for implementing multidisciplinary education, but the complaint is that, no, no, we are affiliated to the university and we can't do anything. Because university guides us. University has implemented multidisciplinary education policy and we have to follow it. It's not like that. We have to develop on our own, what is that we will be doing? And then introducing open electives and offering choice to the students. And for colleges, you can always introduce large number of certification courses. Go for film making, theatres, right? music. Many things can be implemented as certification courses. Value added courses can be taken or guest lectures on multidisciplinary areas can be start first step you can start with just lectures on multidisciplinary areas otherwise we will be teaching the same accounting and same commerce uh, project work and research in multidisciplinary areas so this is very very important when we give research work to the students it has to be in different areas wherein students can think very different So, moving ahead with the implementation, first thing is you need to acclimatize about national education policy. I said we are already one and a half years we have completed and in almost all the newspapers, all the media and all so many lectures you might have heard about national education policy. But the thing is still there are questions. Whenever we go and speak in front of the audience, there will be many questions that it cannot be implemented. Right? So, we have to get clarity and shed all our apprehensions about this policy. Just start doing it is what is required. Very clear, that's why I told you about how to implement the multidisciplinary approach. Only three elements, curriculum, courses, curriculum, pedagogy and assessments. And then evaluate how it can benefit, accept and appreciate things through the process. And finally, start implementation at your level. Don't wait for others for implementation. Are you clear? Is that okay? Shall we all take it up? Implementation of national education policy as ours and we have to do it. Right? It has to happen at the grassroots. The last one, last slide. Okay, thank you. So, education is wholesome and integrated and it is not piecemeal. It is not, it is not piecemeal, it is not divided, it is not broken into pieces. It is always, education is wholesome and integrated in nature. Thank you.